Well, welcome to this sort of how to build a model railway turntable. Um, this tutorial will go through the construction side and then what I'll do is a part two that will deal with the programming side. So from the outset, let's just say I don't have some mega workshop with all the tools going. Now this was built using an electric drill, a soldering iron, some files, you know, screwdrivers, basic stuff that you've got around uh, the garage. And it's also been built using basic materials. Now, this is part of this video is, if you like, the explanation to the project on the Digital Town website. As you can see, there is a link below. And I'd, I'd advise you to go to the website because there are a shed load of photographs on there that go through the whole thing and that can be quite useful. What I'm going to do in this video is basically work through those photographs and the construction process. But I want you to understand from the outset that you do not need lots of fancy equipment. I'm going to put an estimate on the cost of this at about £70. As a rough estimate. Now the most expensive item is the current reversing module. Now I used a Digitrax AR1 because I happen to have one but they're quite expensive. Um, but I've noticed online there's some sort of unbranded ones on eBay that are sort of 15 to 20 pounds. So that can make a huge difference to the price of your project. Now, a full list of construction materials are available again on the Digital Town website right at the top. But you might look at that turntable in front of you and think, well, how big is it? And is it what I need? So what I'm going to do is just show you a couple of pictures of some other ones that, that I've built. So this for the one that I'm working on at the moment, as you can see, that is six inches across. I model in 016.5. So the track is the equivalent to double O or HO, depending which part of the world you're in. Um, it could be modified to be virtually any gauge. Now, you'll notice that this one has a full deck um, cover. That's because that is the style that I wanted to model. If I show you this next one, this is the turntable deck of a previous model that I made. And as you can see, this is more of a traditional type. So you can make this however you want. Um, there are some issues with this sort of open deck style. One of the things you've got to make sure is obviously the width of the bridge is wide enough to cover the electrical pickups as you'll see later on in the project. Anyway, before we start getting into the construction side of things, let's look at some of the problems because the first turntables I built were a disaster. Um, I tried motorizing a Pico turntable. Now I know some people have done a really good job of it. I made a complete dog's breakfast of it. I really did. Um, I then tried making some homemade ones and they went wrong um, because I couldn't machine things to the accuracy that I required. So the process I've come up with allows me to have errors and still for everything to come out right. So don't panic if you cannot machine something perfectly. Anyway, let's look at the major problems in building turntables. So there are three main issues. One of them, the difficult bit, is the power pickups, uh, which aren't on this diagram, but obviously getting the power from your power supply to the track on the turntable is important and that will be covered later on in this explanation. One of the things that was important for me was because I'm running DCC and I want to have some locos with sound decoders, I want the sound to be available while the loco is actually rotating on the turntable. So I have to have power going through all the time. So that's built into my design. Now, here we have the typical major issues that you have. The first one is getting the turntable here square to the 
top of your baseboard. What can often happen is you can install a turntable and if you haven't got this absolutely square, you set your track up and all looks well. When you then rotate the turntable 180 degrees, all of a sudden your track doesn't line up. Now, the smaller the gauge that you work in, the more important that this, that this alignment is near perfect. Even in double O, I really can't have much more than sort of, well, I would think, half a millimeter at most otherwise it's going to look like it's dropping off a cliff as it sort of goes onto the turntable the other problem and this is a quite a difficult one to overcome is getting the track central now i've exaggerated the problem here but if you can imagine this is our center point and obviously we want our rails evenly spaced either side of this i've sort of exaggerated how offset this is because what you can do, you can set your turntable up and if the track's offset, you can line your tracks up. Then, of course, when you rotate the turntable 180 degrees, the thing is completely out of alignment. And this becomes a real problem when you don't have a lot of good equipment or jigs or things like that. So during this tutorial, although obviously you're going to need to drill things and make your holes in as accurate a position as possible, the way I construct the turntable, it's done in such a way that it has adjustable sections within it to get everything right rather than having to get it all right first time. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to work through the different sections of the turntable build. Now for this turntable, just looking at this picture, one of the things you'll notice is that on my version, the edge of the baseboard is very close to the turntable. Now, I did this deliberately because it's something that I needed for this particular module that I'm building. However, that does make life a little bit difficult for me as I build this and it's just something you need to be aware of. If you can get a little bit more space around the edge of your turntable, it will help you. Uh, and one other thing that I've done is the turntable is built as a completely separate module. So what I'm going to do now is quickly show you a video of the turntable running on my desk. Basically, it's going through a test procedure. You'll notice it's rotating quite quickly. The finished version actually runs much, much slower, but I was impatient and I just wanted to make sure that it was indexing correctly. So just take a look at this video. So as you can see, it all works. And uh, I just wanted to just show you some of the problems that I faced in building my particular version. Because I've gone and built this thing right in the corner of the layout, usually I would have a strengthener down both sides. But as you can see on the left hand side, I've had to basically cut it away. This is just a little corner piece that I've fitted in here. This hole also is for a uh, point motor to go in because there's a point that fits here. So I made the construction a little bit more difficult for myself. That's partly to do with the shape of the module, but also because I built a couple of these in the past, I wanted just a little bit more of a challenge and to see if I could actually do it. But uh, on the whole, try and leave yourself some space around the turntable ideally this top frame would also come across and across here but again i can't but with this smaller turntable it still stayed rigid and strong now what i'm going to do now is show you a quick video of the back of the turntable in operation and then some sort of views through the turntable running so you can get an overall view of how the final module works.
So just going through some of the components, this item down here on the right is the Arduino. As you can see, it's got a, uh, this is the stepper motor driver unit. Um, this little chip here is a uh, opto isolator that allows me to read the DCC signal. Again, that'll be more in the second tutorial. We've then obviously got the main shaft that comes from the turntable. This is a GT, GT2 belt and this is the pulley with the stepper motor. Uh, the stepper motor is attached by this screw here and this one which has got a slot so that it is adjustable. Now looking at the other side, apologies because it's a sort of a still frame from that video, you've got the two brushes that are picking up the power from this copper strip. Again, we'll go through all this in the explanation. This is a piece of aluminium um, rectangular section. Then over here, you've got a photo interrupter. I actually put two in. Uh, I only used one in the finished version, but I put two in just in case. And there is a little blade that sticks out here made of brass that goes through the photo interrupter that is used to index the position of the um, turntable. Now, one thing you will have noticed is that stepper motors make a little bit of noise. Now, I'm told I can use a different stepper motor driver and I will be changing the driver to one, I think they call it a silent step or something, to reduce the sound, but it's just worth noting and uh, you can sort of also help to reduce the sound a little bit by putting a little bit of rubber under the mounting plate for the stepper motor. So that sort of gives you a basic overview of how it works. Now I'm going to go through the construction step by step. So we'll start by building the deck. Now as you can see I use a piece of 8mm diameter steel that goes into one of these couplings and on to a piece of this aluminium box section. All cheap materials to buy. The reason I use this box section made of aluminium is it is extremely accurate in its dimensions. Some of the steel stuff you can buy just doesn't seem to have the same accuracy. So I would recommend that you use an aluminium box section for this. I think this is about 30 millimeters by 20 millimeters deep. Uh, you'll notice that the I've got all of this sort of mounted on at the moment. Um, I f unfortunately, I didn't take any pictures when it was in pieces. But basically what I do is you'll notice I've got five bits of copper clad board here. Obviously, scribe a line because you don't want the tracks to short circuit. But what I do is I lay the track across this and then I cut out the sleepers where the copper clad is going to go and then I literally solder the rail directly onto these copper clad boards. Then I cut out the sleepers that were in these gaps. The reason I do that is I don't have any special track gauges and it allows me to keep the track perfectly engaged engage by using the sleepers that would come with the track and then I can just remove them at the end and I get some perfectly engaged track. This is basically has two holes in it, one at each end. Um, I'll show you a picture. Yep, yeah, this is that wider deck that I built. Again, you can see where I have the holes where the sleepers went in. You'll notice there is a mounting hole here and a mounting hole here. Now, these are slightly bigger than the size of the screw, which means that this whole top section can be moved around very slightly on the aluminium box section. That means that although you know I scribe a line on either side here to get everything central, I am well aware that when I try to drill this with an electric drill, I could be a millimetre or so off centre. So by having these screw holes and having a little bit of movement, it allows me some play to move this top deck around and get it in place because that stops these problems that we had earlier where you can finish up with the unit off center. Now here we have the electrical pickups because I'm using DCC 
the one rail gets its power that is literally coming up through the um, steel um, shaft. Uh, I actually put the power in through the screw that holds one of the bearings in place. So the power is actually going through the bearing, through this, through the aluminium box section, through that bit of cladding and into the one rail. The other rail picks up through these carbon brushes. Now these carbon brushes are just out of an electric drill. Uh, they're the replacement ones that I bought them online. They come with a little spring and then what I do is I build them into this plastic container. You'll see some pictures of the plastic container later but this is sort of an overview of the finished item. Obviously I drill a couple of holes into the box section, slide these in, there's then a wire that connects the two inside and then it goes up onto the one rail. The reason I wanted two brushes, I suppose technically I could have got away with one but I felt that two would give more balance but also it means if there was a dirty patch I'm going to constantly get power through. Now this little piece over here is just a piece of brass that's been bent round and this acts as a blade that goes through the photo interrupter. If you're wondering what the red stuff is it's not blood it's my wife's nail varnish and the reason I put nail varnish on there is that it works as a, a locking uh, compound for the screw the screw won't come loose. So that is the sort of the overview of how the box set how the top section works. The great thing about these flange couplings and using aluminium box section it means all of this is going to be absolutely square which stops if you like the wobble problem that we can so easily face. So that is how the top deck is basically constructed. As we now look at the top of one of these units that I've built, as you can see, this is just basically plaster card infill. You know, that to me is just the scenic side of the modelling. But again, you can see those oversized screw holes which allow the unit to be moved in every direction to get that final um, correct setup. Now, here's the close up of the power pickups just to give you an idea of how it works. So these come with usually a lead on the end that's about an inch long. I cut the lead off because the lead that comes off the end of these is quite stiff and I solder on a piece of wire that I then feed through the spring. It has to be mounted within a plastic case. I made this out of plastic card. As you can see, it's pretty crude, but it works. I've never had a problem with them. Um, basically, it keeps the metalwork and this power away from the power that is going up through the main turntable shaft. So that's very simply how the power pickups work. Because they're carbon brushes out of an electric drill, they should last forever and a day. I think I paid about four pounds and got a whole bag load of these things. Um, and they are replaceable. I have actually chipped one off and had to replace one, but uh, they're cheap and if they last in an electric drill for 10 or 20 years, I'm pretty sure that they're going to last in my turntable for the life of it. Now, here's how I get started. So obviously you've got the finished deck over here and as you can see I've drill or jigsawed out a rather wonky hole. Uh, this piece of track here is there because when I'm setting up the turntable one of the things you need to make sure obviously is everything is level so as I put my track on cork obviously I've put the piece of cork in place again you can see just how close I am to the edge of the baseboard not advisable but it works right then what I do is I cut out a piece of wood that the whole uh, unit is going to be built on so the piece of wood was oversized and the more oversized you can get the better because it just fits easier uh, you'll get less potential uh, error on the board it'll become squarer the bigger the area that it covers because mine's got to go into the corner I had to mark the one corner so I knew where I was working from then what you do is you drill a hole for the pillow bearing now 
these pillow bearings as you can see this one's really nicely machined out that's because i was testing a cnc milling machine you don't need to do that you can just drill a hole with a, a standard bit you can get those sort of flat bladed bits I'm not sure what they're called but you know you get about 20 millimeters diameter just measure across the pillow bearing or make a smaller diameter hole and mount the pillow bearing the other way up now the way pillow bearings work just so you know you've got a standard sealed bearing and this isn't fixed firmly into this unit although it's tight it does actually have some movement in it. You can rock it from side to side. If you put the, the shaft through here, you can twist it very slightly. So again, this allows you to have something that is slightly misaligned. One thing to be aware of, as you'll notice, I have lines drawn through where the center is. Try and draw a line through the centers and go out as far as possible because obviously once you've drilled the hole you can't then draw a line mark off your center point so you need to make sure you've got some lines to work from so this is the top view and then what i did was if we go back to the deck picture you've got the blade there and the two carbon brushes so when we come down to this, what I did was I literally pushed the shaft through the hole and then I pushed the turntable down hard and span it by hand. That gave me this line, <laughs> the carbon brushes, it's just like a pencil, it drew a line round. Then what I did was I moved the turntable to different positions and I marked the photo interrupter blade mark so this tells me exactly where that blade is going to travel so i knew then where the photo interrupter had got to go because the photo interrupter only has a slot of about five millimeters across so it needs to be fairly accurate right next stage i then took some copper sheet i just happened to have some um, from another project in the past i've used pieces of aluminium you could use a piece of old tin can anything as long as you can get it nice and flat screw it down the actual um, pickups are going to move about here so just make sure that you avoid your screws as you can see I've then put a pickup here for the power supply to this copper plate now we then this is if you like the top board um, under this with they'll be mounted um, two bearers to separate a top and a bottom board this is the picture of the bottom board to give you an idea where I'm going to go with this so the shaft is going to come through and it's going to be turned by the stepper motor over here now again I had this fancy machine available to me this time that I've been testing but so on this bottom board once again drill yourself a hole for your pillow bearing and then do some experiments on your desk to work out where your pulleys are going to be to get you an idea where your stepper motor center is going to be then cut yourself out a hole and leave yourself a gap around your stepper motor i would advise you to leave at least 10 millimeters one centimeter around your stepper motor because you're not going to get it exact the position and also when you tension it with this adjuster if you can imagine the stepper motor is going to twist slightly so make sure that your stepper motor is going to have plenty of clearance again i've put the bearing onto this lower deck and now we start to see how i put it all together so you'll notice these pieces of wood that I found on the garage floor in the back of the workshop I think they were actually parts of an old banister the great thing about them is they are 100% square and this is where things get important you need this top deck to be if you like your turntable here that turntable there has got to be 100% square with this top face so I've screwed the top deck 
onto these two bearers and then what you do is you move this bottom section around moving the shaft until you can get it absolutely square and this is me doing it in the workshop so I've got a couple of cheap clamps I did this over the hole in the baseboard because I needed somewhere for the shaft to go through and then basically what I do is I just keep tapping it very very slightly until everything lines up so I've used a spirit level to make sure that my baseboard is level make sure you do that there's nothing worse than trying to get this thing square realizing that you're doing it on a surface that's not square so get your baseboard level then mount everything on top and then start to adjust everything until you can get this square not just in this direction but in both directions in fact check as many directions as you want now I can tell you now you're not going to get it you might be better than me but I've never got it perfect perfect but if it stays within the markers of the spirit level to be honest your turntable is going to work you know you're going to depending again how wide your turntable is obviously the bigger the diameter of the turntable the more important this is because if you've got an angle on here the bigger the diameter the worse the error is going to be this is a smaller one so it wasn't quite as critical once all that's sorted obviously I then screw the top and bottom sections together and then what I do is I put the whole unit under the baseboard and try and set it up now I'm just going to try and find a picture um, to show you what lies underneath here so between the top of the baseboard and the top of this unit I've got these two spaces now when you set this up if you notice in the picture that I had when I set this level you'll notice that the turntable is lower than the track I think on mine it was low by about two millimeters that's okay doesn't matter if it's slightly low you do not want it high if it's high you've got a real problem but when it's low all you need to do is put a um, a washer on the shaft on the top of the top bearing and that will lift your turntable up to the correct height and you can always file down that washer to get it absolutely perfect if you need to now once I'd worked out those heights and again this is where the washer would go it sits on the top of the bearing just there what I then did was um, because I'd set it up on my baseboard this is if you like my main track exit for the design I use the way that it works is the photo interrupter sits between the most used track that I will use from the turntable and the reason I do that is that it means every time the turntable returns to that position it re-indexes itself one of the problems with stepper motors is that they're very accurate but if that but they don't know where they are now a problem comes is if something happened and the turntable got jammed for some reason something fell down the side or whatever the uh, stepper motor can miss some steps so then all your turntable will miss a line so by having it index every time it comes back to a certain position the uh, turntable will be constantly re-indexing itself so constantly reminding itself of where zero is and it will maintain accuracy for hours upon end which is what we want so I drilled a couple of holes filed them out and then these are the photo interrupters the blade goes between this slot now there are a couple of components on here and there's a link on the Digital Town website above on the circuit that goes in to using a photo interrupter with an Arduino. You'll notice it's just on a couple of bits of Vero board. You then basically screw it into the bottom of the deck, mount it in place, 
and then drill some holes in the lower plate to obviously let the wires out. So as you can see now, the stepper motor is mounted on this steel plate. Uh, this piece of metal is actually the piece of an old computer case that I just cut out with some tin snips. You know, use anything that's a decent piece of metal. So you need basically four screws to hold it to the plywood base. One screw goes into one corner of the stepper motor, one into the other mounting hole, but obviously in a slot so that you can move it. Again, I just drilled a set of holes and got an old file and filed the thing through. As you can see, by this point, it's all coming together. Now, at this point, this steel mounts straight onto the plywood. What I'm actually going to do is put a piece of rubber gasket under here, probably a piece of old bicycle inner tube, something like that. Stepper motors can have a little bit of vibration, and if you can put some sort of rubber in there, it'll just dampen the vibrations. Now, the power... Um, you'll notice there's a black lead coming off here that's going to the one bearing mounting screw and basically so my one rails power comes through this wire goes through the shaft and as i've said up onto the deck now there is a problem because obviously when you've got power going through like that when your turntable turns 180 degrees the polarity of the rails won't match the polarity of the track and when your train starts to run off with DCC you will get a short circuit. Now this is where these auto reversing modules come into play. Again I used a Digitrax one because I just happened to have one from an old project years ago but there are cheaper ones available and there's an organization called Merge Again, there's a link on the Digital Town website to go to their website where they've even got kits you can build your own. But what this does is when it senses a short circuit, for anyone who's used DCC, you'll know when you get a short circuit, the um, power gets turned off after a very short period of time. What this unit does is it's even faster at turning the power off, but instead of turning it fully off, it reverses the polarity on the power supply. So your track power would come from the track into this unit and then from this unit to the rails on the turntable. So every time it's out of sync, it just instantly puts itself back in sync. And then you can see how I've then mounted the whole unit into the bottom of the baseboard. Now a couple of things to be aware of. You can just see the beginnings of the top frame. In an ideal world I would have probably made that out of thicker plywood and made it go the entire way round the turntable. That would have given me um, a better fit against the top, the bottom of the baseboard to ensure squareness. You might think that these posts that I use are a little bit over the top. Um, they are. They're completely over the top. This thing is completely over engineered but because these are a very rigid type of wood and they are perfectly square it means that the, there is going to be no warping between the two boards. One other thing that you just need to think about is the distance between the two boards. The bigger the distance between the two boards, the more stable the turntable will be. Having said that, using these pillow bearings that I've been using, there is no flex at all. I'm not sure how much weight I could put on there, but I would think the weight would be pretty substantial. I would imagine I could virtually stand on the thing. So this is very over engineered with my sort of 016.5 which is sort of O gauge, narrow gauge. Yeah, my heaviest engine when it goes onto the turntable there is no flex whatsoever. So I've then got the wires that come from the um, photo interrupters go down this white cable to the Arduino. The power obviously comes off here and goes to the track. And this ribbon cable comes across here and goes over to the Arduino. Now I'm not going to cover the Arduino section today. I'll do that in a separate tutorial 
and probably include the programming code with that, although the code is already on the website. Now, you might not want a DCC um, version of this. You may just want a conventional um, version. Just use your um, conventional power controller. So you could change this to a low speed, um, high torque uh, motor. You can get them on eBay. They are a high torque 12 volt DC motor and gearbox. I think it's a worm and wheel gearbox. They're the sort of thing that would work really well. I would aim for one that would turn at about 20 to 30 RPM. You'll find them on uh, eBay. They should be about 15 pounds, something like that. Uh, by that, you wouldn't have the indexing, but you could just build the turntable and rotate it to the position as you wanted. So I'm going to end this tutorial now as it's been quite long enough. That is the mechanical construction. And then in part two, I'll cover the um, the programming side. So I hope that has been useful to you. I realize it is a lot to take in. And if you go to that Digital Town website, you can see the various photos and take your time to go through it. What I have finished up with in the last few turntables I've built are some very nicely running turntables. I'll put some videos on later of the complete finished units running, but they do work extremely well. And even with my little 040s that are very sensitive to sort of rough track, the engines have no trouble running straight onto the turntable and run straight off perfectly. So I hope that's been useful, and if it has, please click the like and subscribe button. See you in the next part.